How's it going there guys? In this video we're going to be taking a look at this neat little bit of equipment right here, the Astro Oasis Focus Arose. Now Astro Oasis reached out directly to me to ask if I'd like to take a look at this piece of equipment and after a little bit of research I said yes uh, I want to take a look as long as it can be adapted to fit to an Edge HD 11. They said that's no problem, what should address? It really was that simple so shout out to Astro Oasis, it's not always that simple setting up reviews for you guys uh but you know within a week or so i had this on my doorstep along with the required edge hd you know sct adapter right there so it's all set up it's ready to go all i need to do is fit this to my telescope but the thing that makes this stand out from other standard electronic automatic focuses on the market is its ability to be very quickly decoupled from your scope so you can rotate the body and in doing so, you disengage the gears, uh, fully restoring manual focus movement to you, which can be a great time saver, to be honest, as well. Uh, one example of this as a quick one for you. Uh, just recently, I swapped from F10 on my Edge HD down to F1.9 with the Hyperstar being fitted. It took longer for the electronic automatic focus to make the required 110,000 step movement, I think, in order to reach focus after that big equipment change. It took about five plus minutes of solid focus of movement uh, to make the 20 something turns required. It took longer for the motor to do that than it did to fit the Hyperstar, so it can save you a bit of time in some cases, but that's not, you know, the top of my priority list. If anything, astrophotography teaches you to be patient with things like that but the big thing uh is that it does restore my ability to do some visual with that telescope which given that it's a bit of a swiss army scope and i love to do just about everything i can <laughs> with it uh being able to go back to being able to do visual again really quickly and easily is a major selling point for me um i don't think most people are going to need a focuser like this i i will say that right away to be honest with you i think in most cases if all you're interested in doing it's just astrophotography with a telescope and you're not you know you're not bothered about looking through it or anything like that or you're not frequently making large equipment changes that require huge focus movements and such then you probably don't need this you can just stick with the normal eaf and save yourself some money that's what i'd do but in my particular case on this telescope i would buy this because i think it the you know the functionality that it restores is more than worth the asking price of the parts it is very very well built i will say that it's it's all beautifully machined and put together it's not cheap um i don't think you could call it cheap but it doesn't feel cheap either it is well made so uh, you get what you pay for <laughs> typically uh speaking and this is no exception it is it is a well-made bit of kit it also has if you wish by the way uh, a bluetooth functionality so you can pair it with an app on your phone so let's say if you are doing some visual and you find yourself a little bit shaky with all we've all been there if you've been looking through a scope or iMag um, you can get it close and then just slightly tickle that motor with the uh, bluetooth app right there which is neat to see uh, enable hands-off focusing once again should you wish it does have a heater built in, so if you come from a particularly cold environment, uh, this can be operated right the way down to minus 30, thanks to the inbuilt heater. Uh, it's got an inbuilt temperature probe uh, and also an external probe included with this thing, and the whole thing can be powered just from a, a standard USB. It comes with the cable as well, so a USB-A to C adapter. Now, one of the great things about this that I found was that the documentation with it is second to none it's hugely in-depth so this is the basic user manual i say basic this is the base user manual uh, it comes with a huge amount of tips and information on installation and usage there is a specific installation manual too right here uh, which is to put it lightly fully fledged we will say i've just been mainly using this part right here having a look through the installation on sct part but it's great to see you know they've gone into a lot of information with this for you so if you are buying one of these you're not going to be left high and dry wondering how the heck do i get this fitted to my telescope i will say in most cases by the way in most cases fitment should be extremely simple really as it's more of just a collar clamping system uh and as long as it's installed into the right angle that's about it it, it should be really simple to install and use in most cases 
Anyway, I am going to go ahead and get this fitted to my telescope now, and we will catch up a little bit later. All right then guys, so I'm just preparing to put the focuser now onto the SCT, and I figured that it's fiddly enough that really I should cover the kind of pre-installation steps that I'm going to take in order to try to not invite chaos during the, the later parts of the installation. So this is the SCT adapter. I'll also cover just a like a kind of a demonstration on a normal focuser in a moment. Um, more on that in a sec. But anyway, so the, on your SCT adapter, I think what you need to do is take off these three faceplate screws. I just used a PZ2 screwdriver to do that. So they're all loose. It's ready to be taken off. I'll pull that safely to one side for a second. Now this came pre-assembled for me, basically. Uh, so it's got a bearing in the base. I'll try to get this focused for you. So a bearing in the base, make sure these are clean and free of any debris. A bearing on top, again, same thing. Uh, mine came with the A5 um, gear installed right on the end as well, already tightened down. I've double checked that it's talked up. But one thing that you are gonna wanna do is install the grub screws. So you can see there's a tiny little hole there and then 190 degrees away right there these do come in the pack for you of course but these are tiny little blighters they really are minuscule things and you know if your place is anything like mine if you drop one of those you're never going to find it ever again so it's best to wind those in now somewhere safe where the longest drop is a a an inch you know what i mean um, next up is going to be preparing your SCT uh, with this part, so you can pull the rubber plunger off the back of your focus mechanism as it is, exposing the brass cylinder, that, the kind of barrel of the focus um, end, the knob itself. Take off the Celestron faceplate, that's the orange one, and in its place pop this in using the appropriate screw holes for your size telescope. Again, this comes with the right screws all in a bag. Once that's on, you can then take you know the rest of this out. So you'd be sitting this on top. I'll just dry assemble this as best as I possibly can. Please forgive me, this is uh, reasonably fiddly. You pop this on, tighten that down, and then you can see the flange is prepared for uh, this part, your, your actual clamp. Uh, now you're not gonna need any special alignment tools for the clamp on this in terms of installing it to an SCT. So you can go ahead and make sure that the open side of the flange is towards you. Pop this on the end of your focuser, pop your three screws into that, and that's now ready to be dropped on top of the whole thing. Kind of this way around, I'll just have to take out that back screw to dry assemble this for a moment. But it's, you know, it's clamp on there with focuser in place too at the same time. And once everything is stacked like that, you can see it's, it's in the engaged position. So, you know, focus movement, if this was tightened up, would be arrested. And then if I can just spin this, you can also disengage it. And move, re-engage, and you can see we're back in, you know, in connection with this. Now, one thing they do note, and of course this is just gears for you, um, when you do try to re-engage, sometimes you may find that you're landing with the pinion, uh, the gears on the edge of this one, right landing on the edge of a tooth of this. So it, you could find the case where you might need to just gently rock this before you, you know, install. And also you may know, it does say this in the instructions, that the end of the run right there for the adjustment bolt, it may not actually need to be indexed all the way to the end. It's just, it's a bit of extra space there just so it can uh, have some freedom of installation on various different models so uh, hopefully that covers a little bit of that for you now i will just try to carefully move that to one side and nick the little bits that i need once again to try and briefly show you a uh, what the most simple installation could look like so uh, let's say on this sort of thing this is just a cheap grayford focuser um, but you'd take off the coarse focus knob making sure to first found out the flange sides uh, that you're going to need for your clamp. So in my case, I've got some digital um, calipers here. So I can tell you that this is well, it's, it's, it's 35 mil on the flange and then also locate the size of your shaft too. Ooh, uh, and you can see that this is a four mil shaft in this case. Now, unfortunately, 
this thing doesn't ship with either a 35mm flange or a 4mm adaptable gear. It comes with instead in my case. Well, it came with the 33, which I think is the most commonly used size, stuff like Asgard telescopes and, uh, well, a, a lot of telescopes as it looks like this will be the right one. And it comes with five and six mil gears, That's the, but that's all you have. But in, in general, I can just show you just roughly what this would look like. So you'd fit your appropriate gear on the end of this, preparing to bolt that down. You would uh, fit your flange onto the end of the focus motor once again, this way around, so open side of the flange. If this would ever focus, open side of the flange towards you. And then this whole thing can be clamped down over the top, just like that. So you'd, you'd, you'd bolt it in place, and then with one pinch bolt right there, you'd hold it on, and you could take the whole thing off as well by removing that one pinch bolt kind of thing, and then it could be, you know, comfortably disengaged, re-engaged at your will. But that is the simplest possible type of installation that you could go with uh, on this thing. But as I say, out of the box, it doesn't come with the right parts to fit it to this particular type of Crayford, which is a bit of an awkward type of Crayford anyway. But that is one thing where I think it probably falls slightly flat for me. Uh, more on that in a sec. All right guys, so apologies for the shoddy camera work here, but you can see it's installed. It took 11 minutes, all in, including time spent, removing the old EAF and the bracket right there. Uh, but yeah, it didn't take long whatsoever, and it's, it's installed, it's, you can see it's locked off right now. If I just try and block the light as such, hopefully you can see. I'm, I'm putting pressure on this. There's almost no mechanical backlash whatsoever on this thing. It's, it's really incredibly well made. Um, I'll undo the lock knob now, disengage the focuser, if I can get focus <laughs> on my camera to work, and now I can show you how this thing can be rotated, so you can just use it just like your standard focuser, like you always would, do you know what I mean? Works, uh, works a treat, and then let's say you're finished, you want to lock back off, rotate this down, you'll see the teeth engaged right there, make sure it's tight, lock off, and that's it, you're back to a full autofocus system. Once again, I have to say, uh, I worried it was going to be more difficult than it actually was to install this thing. With all the correct mounting hardware, it was completely painless, and it's incredibly rigid and well made. So, top marks on installation, can't knock it whatsoever if you've got the right equipment. Well then guys, that's all installed now, as you've seen on uh, my segments of video right there. I'm really happy with how it all went together, I have to say. Uh, top marks there, build quality is wonderful installability once you've got as i say the correct parts for whatever scope you're using just really easy very very satisfying uh, piece of equipment to have on your scope i've no worries whatsoever about it there's no mechanical backlash being introduced by any of it because it's all locked down so solid there's no brackets to flex and things like that it's, it's, it's you know it's a quality piece of equipment and it shows, and that would be my final say on that part of things until I get the chance to properly test this out underneath the skies. Now, we have terrible weather right now. At this time of the, the year in UK, especially for some reason this year has been worse than most. Um, so I can't actually test this in time for this video. I will be using this, however, extensively from here on out on that SCT. So you're hopefully gonna be able to get to see it in action over a variety of different nights in different scenarios and different setups too. Uh, and I can't wait to show you more about it. I will be doing some repeatability tests to see how good it nails focus time after time after time. I think that kind of thing is important and I think it will excel. I really do have uh, a good feeling about this thing. The rest of it's designed so well. Uh, but yeah, as I said earlier, I do want to finish with this. I, I want to say thank you once again to Astro Oasis for sending this through for review. Uh, I do want to say, hopefully, maybe uh, it's possible that they can fit in a couple of extra uh, ways to actually mount this to your telescopes because it's such a wonderful piece of hardware. Um, it, it's almost a shame to not be able to fit it to just about whatever you want right out of the box. Do you know what I mean? A bit like a ZWO EAF is a very adaptable system. Uh, it, does, it does have mild flaws with that cheese plate design, but overall it's very very adaptable uh, and that's what this 
is if it came with all the parts uh, i would say that's my gut feeling on it i may be wrong i'm open to uh feedback on that but yeah if, if it could come with like another clamp or so and maybe the rest of those gears excellent that's that's what i would say excellent and i would recommend it to anybody who's interested in restoring your ability to manually move your focuser but as i said at the start i don't think everybody needs this kind of focuser it's a step beyond what you're going to need in most scenarios if all you want to do is astrophotography and focus your telescope you know repeatedly time after time after time after time you may as well just you know get something else because you don't need the extra functionality you're paying for something you're not going to use in that scenario as beautiful as it is um so there you have it that would be my final piece of advice if it's what you need it's excellent uh but if you don't need that functionality then it's not for you anyway thank you very much indeed for watching i look forward to catching you up in a future video i won't talk up any more of your time because this has been a long one and i'm uh, i'm sorry about that but i have a lot to say <laughs> on things like this anyway guys uh look after yourselves thank you for watching i will see you and another one. Clear skies.